In this lesson, we will review how Autodesk Inventor utilizes construction geometry. Construction geometry can help us define the sketch, but when we go back and actually create a feature, for example, extrude or revolve that sketch, the construction geometry will be consumed and will not appear. So in the geometry that I have on the screen, basically some simple steps, if you will, I want to define the angle that each of these endpoints on the right-hand side will define that exact same angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place in a line starting at the first endpoint and ending at that last endpoint. Press the escape key. I'm going to select that line segment and I'm going to change its line type style to construction. So you'll notice it went to small dashes. And what I want to do next is we want to go back and have each of these other line segments fall on that construction line. So let me drag this back here a little bit. So in this case, I just dragged that. Could have also went back and applied a constraint. So again, I have some geometry selected. That's why the option didn't appear correctly. So in this case, let's again apply a coincident constraint. I want that endpoint to touch that line. So now as I drag this up and down, all of those endpoints remain coincident or touching that line segment. So in this case, I'll apply a dimension to the construction geometry and that bottom horizontal. Let's apply a 30 degree angle. And as you can see, they are all touching that 30 degree. Now, of course, I could do the exact same thing on the inside as well if I wanted to. In this case, I'm just going to switch to an isometric view to show you what happens when we extrude this geometry. So when I select that profile, you'll notice the construction line was consumed. It's still available. It's just inside that sketch. So when I go back and make that sketch active, it's still there. So I could go back, change my mind and say, I want that to be at 45 degrees. See, I have a little bit of an issue with that. So I may need to drag that geometry up a little bit. Let's get in a little bit tighter. And of course, applying some other dimensions would help prevent that as well. But it definitely proves the point that construction geometry really helps eliminate a lot of basic dimensions that I would require to go back and hold that exact same angle on all of those endpoints. Now let me start up a new part file and give one other example. In this case, I'm going to start off drawing a construction circle. You can see I still have those small dashes. Place a dimension on that. Now what I need to be a little bit careful about, any geometry that I'm going to draw after this is going to be construction. Just pre press the escape key because that is the style that is set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck the construction. And I'm going to remove those two line segments. And I want to place in a polygon. And let's go with five sides. And again, I'm going to go with the inscribed circle. Starting off at that center point. And applying it to the right side quadrant of that construction circle. So at this point, I could go back, apply some other constraints. Maybe, for example, we'll apply a horizontal constraint to the bottom of our pentagon. So now as I go back, change the value of that circle, my polygon changes as well. And the same thing is going to hold true here. If I go back and extrude that out, the construction geometry will be consumed and will not be visible at the feature level.